As video editors, we all know the struggle. Telling a compelling visual story is not an easy task. It's a journey full of obstacles, doubts, and sacrifices. But if you've done this long enough, then you also know the feeling of clicking that upload button and completing a project. It's a rewarding feeling unlike any other feeling out there. So I've been editing for 15 years now, and over those years of going through this process many, many times, I've refined my overall workflow in a lot of ways that have made me a drastically faster editor, and have also made the editing process a lot more fun and enjoyable for me. So in this video, I'm gonna be sharing some of my favorite tips and shortcuts in no particular order to hopefully also improve your overall workflow and help you make better videos. And although my main video editing software is DaVinci Resolve, these are all tips and shortcuts that can also be used in Premiere Pro and Final Cut as well. So let's get right into it. Number one, get a large monitor. Now this one might just seem obvious to many of you, but editing is undeniably more enjoyable when you have more space to work with. For me, it's night and day working from my laptop compared to working on my bigger 27 inch display in my office. And most of the time I actually use both displays so I can view two apps at once, like my notes or a Google doc on one display and DaVinci on another. My most ideal workspace is a three monitor setup. So currently I use the Apple Studio Display and the reason I love this thing so much is because I can plug in three additional drives to my computer because of the additional USB-C ports, something I wasn't able to do with my other monitors. Number two, virtual desktops. If you're only using one desktop view for all of your applications, you are doing it wrong. In both Windows and Mac, you can create virtual desktops to better organize your workspace. On the Mac operating system, these are called spaces. All you do is initiate mission control and add another desktop in the top right. Now you can jump between these spaces. In Mac OS, you can use three fingers on your trackpad to swipe between spaces, or you can use the default shortcut control plus left and right arrow keys. I programmed these buttons on my mouse to activate these shortcuts to make things even easier for me. Now you want to use these spaces or virtual desktops on your operating system in order to better utilize your screen real estate. So I can have DaVinci Resolve open in one space and have a Google Doc open in another and then Ableton in another space. This feature is really important for me in my workflow. Number three, utilize the Finder sidebar. Got a folder you're constantly going back to during a project? Maybe it's a specific folder for footage or an export folder? Stop manually navigating to that folder every time you need to find it. Just drag the folder to the sidebar, and now every time you open up a new Finder window or you want to import clips to a project, that folder will always be there on the left sidebar. And when you're done having to consistently access that folder, you can simply right-click on it in the sidebar and remove it. Number four, quickly rename exports. Don't ever manually type out the full name of the export again after each go. Just double click the name of the previous export and the name will automatically be applied up above. Then you can add V2 or V30, whatever version it is, to the end of the name and you're good to go. Number five, get to really know your footage. What I mean by this is go through the process of making selects of each day or segment of your shoot. I like to separate each day into its own timeline and make my selects from there. This just means cutting out all the stuff that's clearly not usable or deleting duplicate takes and just deciding on the one that I wanna keep. From there, I'll copy all of the selects and paste them further down the timeline and refine them one more time. This is the process of refining your selects and extracting all of those best moments. Sometimes I'll do this whole process a third time and by the end of it, I'll have a condensed sizzle reel of all the absolute best moments from that one day. So now when I wanna pull clips from my main edit, I'll just reference that little sizzle reel to quickly find all the absolute bangers. And the great thing about this is I still have all the footage from that day over to the left in case I need something that didn't make it to the end. Number six, use smart bins, also known as search bins. Although I do recommend making sure your media pool always stays organized, sometimes I just don't feel like constantly having to move files around to stay organized. Smart bins in DaVinci or search bins in Premiere Pro solve this problem. Let's say all of my timelines are scattered amongst many different folders in my project. Ideally, I'd like them all to be in one folder. Well, what I can do is create a new smart bin, tell it what I want inside of it, and just like that, I have a folder with all the timelines in my entire project. And I can do this with pretty much anything. Let's say I want to make a folder with only clips shot at 60 frames per second. Easy. Now I have this one specific folder with all the clips in my project that were shot at 60 frames per second. 
Number seven, edit off of solid state drives, not hard drives. Although solid state drives or SSDs are typically more expensive, they're more reliable because they don't have any internal moving parts, so there's less chance they will break in the long run and the transfer speeds are a lot faster. This means your editing software can read and write from those drives faster, allowing the editing process to move much more seamlessly. Now, I still always recommend backing up your project on a secondary drive, and for that, it's totally fine to use a slower hard drive as you're not editing off of that drive, but you're just using it as a backup for your files. I've primarily been using Glyph drives for over three years now and I've absolutely loved them. So I was pretty stoked when they offered to sponsor this video and also give all of you guys a pretty epic discount. The reason I continue to use Glyph as my main form of storage is because they make drives that are smaller and faster than the competition, but also have more storage capacity. This little guy right here fits in the palm of my hand and can hold up to eight terabytes. And they also make the best looking drives in my opinion. Glyph has been in the business for over 29 years and is trusted by some of the biggest media companies around the globe, like Netflix, Disney, and HBO. Together, Glyph and I have put together this custom landing page to help educate you on the proper way to use external storage, as well as provide some really great discounts exclusive to the people watching this video. I've added the link in the description, so make sure to check it out. Number eight, use custom keyboard shortcuts. So first of all, do not use the default keyboard shortcut layout that comes with your software. With every program, Premiere Pro, Final Cut, and even my favorite, DaVinci Resolve, I found that the default keyboard shortcut layouts are poorly thought out, and I would not recommend anyone use those. Many of these shortcuts require you to use both hands and cover the span of your entire keyboard. This takes up a lot of time in the long run, and you'll find that you'll constantly have to take your right hand on and off of your mouse or trackpad. It's little things like this that may not seem like they take up too much time in the moment, but over time they add up and add a lot of time to your overall workflow. You want the shortcuts you use the most to be on the left side of your keyboard, and you wanna be able to initiate these shortcuts quickly with one hand. Now, it's not as important that you use my exact shortcuts, but what is important is for you to develop the awareness to recognize which actions you perform the most when editing, and to make sure you're not taking unnecessary steps in order to initiate those actions. Just assign a custom keyboard shortcut to those actions so that you can save your future self a lot of time. In my own workflow, I've developed a pretty elaborate keyboard shortcut layout that allows me to edit much faster. Let me share with you just a few of my favorite custom shortcuts. Number one, Q, W, and E. So first of all, just stop using the blade tool. This is unnecessary and it takes way too long to continue moving back and forth between blade mode and selection mode. Use these shortcuts instead. Q, W, and E. Q allows you to trim to the left of the playhead. W allows you to cut the selected clip at the playhead, and E allows you to trim the selected clip to the right of the playhead. These are some of my most used shortcuts, especially in the process of making selects. Think of it as the left finger cuts left of the playhead, middle finger cuts the clip, and right finger cuts right of the playhead. One thing to note is that you want to make sure that selection follows playhead is enabled in the menu in order for these shortcuts to work. Now your editing software won't have these specific shortcuts by default. You'll have to manually go into the keyboard customization window and add these shortcuts yourself. And I highly recommend you do so. It literally takes 30 seconds. Just go into keyboard customization and set Q to ripple start to playhead, W split clip, and E ripple end to playhead. Now the editing terms for each of these actions slightly differ between each program. So just check the description if you're using Premiere Pro or Final Cut. Also, if you're a member of Colder Creative, you also get my entire keyboard shortcut layout that I've developed over my lifespan of video editing, and you don't have to manually enter any of these shortcuts. All you do is upload the keyboard layout file provided in the course to your software, and you'll instantly have access to all of my personal custom shortcuts. You also get this really cool PDF cheat sheet that allows you to very easily remember all of these shortcuts. The next shortcuts are one, two, and three. Two allows me to start and stop playback, just like the space bar. One allows me to play in reverse, and three allows me to play forwards. And if I press three again, playback speed will double. So if I press three once, playback is normal speed. If I press it again, playback speed doubles. And if I press it again, it doubles again. These are just more shortcuts that allow me to quickly navigate my timeline. These shortcuts are also not default and you'll have to manually add them to your keyboard customization window. These shortcuts are strategically placed right above Q, W, and E because I wanna easily access these without having to move my hand across my keyboard. The default shortcuts for these actions are J and K. Now you can see why that's not a good idea. Ripple delete. If I just normally delete this clip in my timeline, we're left with this gap, which I can then delete again or drag the other clips over to the left. Ripple delete makes this much easier. 
I customize the button S to initiate ripple delete. When I press S, it instantly deletes the clip as well as the space that would have been left behind when using the standard delete method. Trim mode. Let's say I have a clip in my timeline and it's lined up perfectly with the music. Now let's say that I want to use a different part of this clip. What I would do when I first started editing was move the clip to the track above, expand it, and then look for the different part of the clip I wanted to use. I'd cut it again and then put it back into its original spot. Don't ever do this. Just select trim mode. I made the shortcut for this T and use this tool to slip the clip right and left to use a different part of the clip without adjusting the position and timing of the clip. You can also use this tool to move the cut points between clips. Now in DaVinci Resolve, I've made custom shortcuts to show and hide the various panels within the edit tab. Tab allows me to open and close the media pool on the left and shift tab allows me to open and close the inspector on the right. A lot of the time I don't need to see these panels. So instead of them just taking up space, I'll hide them and free up space for the panels I'm focusing on. I also have shortcuts to show and hide the effects, edit index and sound library. Number nine, get a gaming mouse with programmable buttons. Getting a gaming mouse for me has been huge for my overall workflow, not even just with editing, but for my computer operating system, um, for music production, for pretty much any program that I'm working in, uh, getting a mouse with programmable buttons has been huge. Because of the additional programmable buttons, I essentially never need to take my hand off of my mouse when editing, and it allows me to perform certain tasks much faster. Let me give you an example. I've set my scroll wheel to also initiate up and down. Just by doing this, I'm able to jump between clips in my timeline using my mouse, and if I hold Option or Alt, I can now move clips between tracks. And if I hold Shift, I'm able to jump between markers in my timeline. Literally just for these shortcuts alone, I would say it's 100% worth getting a mouse. Before using a mouse, I would do all of my editing from my laptop trackpad, which looking back feels ridiculous to me and I question how I managed to do that for so long. I'm currently using the Logitech G502 Lightspeed and I absolutely love this mouse. Now Logitech is not sponsoring me in any way. This is just genuinely the gear that I personally use. It's got 11 customizable buttons and I use every single one of them. I also have shortcuts on my mouse that allow me to initiate mission control and to jump between spaces as well. I can also use my mouse to pause, play, play next, and play previous songs without even having to open Spotify. As you can see, this is a huge time saver and allows me to keep my attention on the program in front of me instead of having to jump between two different windows. And finally, number 10, switch to DaVinci Resolve. So this is undoubtedly the best decision I've made as a video editor. Honestly, I didn't even realize what I was missing out on in many ways until I made the commitment to learning the program. Since I've switched, I've become a much better colorist, sound designer, and my overall excitement to edit has gone up substantially, mainly because this is a much more enjoyable space for me to work in and offers many incredible features you just don't have access to in Premiere or Final Cut. And for that reason, I think it's by far the best software on the market. Most people know DaVinci as the best color grading software, and it is, but it's so much more than that. In my opinion, I think it's better than Premiere Pro and Final Cut in every way. If you're interested in the specifics of why it's better, check out this in-depth video I made about DaVinci Resolve here. I believe it's here, it might be here, one of these. And if you're interested in learning the software, you can check out my online video editing school, Colder Creative, where I teach the program from beginning to end and break down my own editing workflows in DaVinci Resolve, After Effects, and Premiere Pro to teach you everything I know about video editing. This is also a community of over 3,000 students worldwide where we host epic events like contests, community nights, and job opportunities to help you get noticed and make a successful career from your passion. For more information on Colder Creative, you can check out the link in the description down below. So that's it for this video. If you enjoy my work, make sure to hit the subscribe button and let me know what tip you found most useful in the comments below. I'll see you in the next one.